What's going on guys? My name is Zach or Optic Two Bar and I've got another After Effects tutorial for you guys. This one is a scope design tutorial. You may have seen this sort of technique in uh some of my edits. It's basically where you uh you design something onto the scope and then it only shows up when they're scoped in, if you know what I mean. So it shows up here, but when he zooms out, it's not there. And uh yeah, that's what we're going to be doing. So, uh, if you want to download these project files, including some of the elements that I'm going to be using in this tutorial, there's going to be a link in the description, and go ahead and download that. Otherwise, I'm going to go ahead and make a new project. I'm going to save changes. Alright, I'm going to import all of the elements that I need. So this includes uh, this fo folder of logos. Uh, let's see here. We've got some lens images and uh, let's see what else we have our clip and that's it so we've got a clip and some elements to use to design this scope so I'm gonna go ahead and take my clip and drag it into a new composition and here we are so this clip is just you know a regular clip and what I'm gonna do is just gonna park my current time indicator on a frame where I can see the scope and just leave it there for now so the first thing I'm going to do is actually go into these lens images and we've got some really cool uh, actual lens images and we're going to use them to design a scope. So I'm going to take this lens image 3 and I'm just going to drag it into our composition. I'm going to set the transfer mode to screen so we can see through it and what screen does is it'll remove all the blacks of the uh, of the layer and show only the whites and midtones and so on and uh, so you can see through it I'm gonna go ahead and scale it down so that it fits into our scope so hold on shift and it will scale uh, perfectly you can also select the layer and just press S for scale and, and drag the sliders alright so that looks about good next I'm gonna go ahead and make a new solid or control Y for short and uh, just make it black for now and I'm going to go ahead and actually hide that solid and what we're going to do is we're going to make a mask around the scope for that solid so make sure your solid is selected go up to the ellipse tool and then just click in the exact middle and drag out your circle holding down shift and control uh, control will make it drag from the center and shift will keep it as a perfect circle just to the point where it fills up the entire scope so right about there and uh, if you turn it back on you can see that we have a black circle now so I'm going to select that mask now and duplicate it so control D to duplicate it and set the second mask to subtract I'm going to select my solid and press MM a couple of times to open up the mask properties and on mask 1 I'm going to increase the expansion a bit to make this little stroke and you can't really see it right now so what I'm going to do is actually select the solid and press control shift Y to open up the solid settings and just change it to a red for now so we can see it alright so now I'm going to add a layer style to this solid so I'm going to right click on the solid and go to layer styles and add a bevel and emboss I'm going to go under the bevel and emboss settings down here I'm going to increase the depth to a thousand and increase the size up into the point where it looks pretty good and uh, you know you can mess with some of the other settings but I want like sort of a hard chisel with uh, you know highlights uh, as part of this design and I want to mention that this part is completely up to you you don't have to follow what I'm doing I'm just sort of designing a scope and then I'm going to be showing you guys the technique in a second so that looks about good. I'm actually going to close this and go back into my solid settings and make it black again. So there we go. And I'm going to turn back on the lens image. Now this lens image is obviously way too white and blown out. So there's a couple of things you can do. You can select it, press T for opacity and just turn down the opacity a bit. Or what I'm probably just going to do is select to select the layer go to the ellipse tool and draw an ellipse in the middle using the same technique and then setting that to subtract and then turn it back on and then press F 
to get to our mask feather and feather that out a bunch. Press MM and uh, increase the expansion so it's just showing the edges with that texture so it makes it a lot more subtle. And I actually recommend you guys do a pretty subtle effect here. You don't want to make it too distracting. In fact, in the example, I think that is probably overkill. But I wanted to show you guys, uh, you know, that you can do whatever you want. But you probably want to keep it subtle. And actually, this looks pretty good right now. You've got nice black and white sort of theme going here. And it looks pretty stealthy. But just for the sake of this tutorial, I'm going to add those logos that you saw. The Optic logo and the Astro logo. So I'm going to go ahead and bring those out. So let me bring out the Astro logo first. I'm going to scale it down. Rotate it a bit. Something like that. And uh, the way you make it cut out is if you make a black solid. And we go ahead and go into our uh, mask that we created. The fir very first mask that we created just around the scope. So it's this one. And you go up to Edit Copy on that mask and then go on to our new black solid and edit paste it will cut out just the black circle and what we're going to do is we're going to use that as a alpha mat so let me show you how to do that so you make sure that that black solid and I'm actually going to press enter and rename this to scope mat make sure that it's on top of the layer that you want to cut out so in this case the astro logo so make sure that's underneath the scope mat. You go to the track mat settings and if you don't see that you've got these switches and modes down here. So under track mat you want to change that to alpha inverted. And you can see that it will cut out. And you can basically move this anywhere and anytime it goes towards that where that black circle is which has now disappeared it will get cut out. So it's a very cool way to cut something out and uh, yeah so now I'm gonna add a fill just to recreate my uh, example I'm gonna add a fill to the logo make it black I'm gonna go to the logo right click and go to layer styles and uh, make a outer glow and under the outer glow settings I'm going to change the color let me uh, remove the fill for a second I'm gonna change the color to that orange from the star. I'm turning the fill back on. And uh, let's see, we want, we want to probably make the size a little bit more and drop the opacity quite a bit. So something like that to like 15% or so. So that's a very subtle little uh, cutout of the Astro logo. And you know, you can move this over and make it more visible there. And I'm going to do the same thing for the optic logo really quick. So I'm going to bring out the optic logo. I'm going to duplicate our scope mat. So control D to duplicate a layer once you select it. Drag that above the logo that we want to cut out. And on the logo, select alpha inverted mat. And then I'm going to move it over here. And uh, let's see, I'm going to go to our Astro logo under layer styles. I'm going to select the outer glow and copy that and then just paste it to the other logo so it paste it and instead of using that orange I'm gonna use a green from the optic logo and then just add a fill and make it a black and we've got sort of the same thing going here and this is obviously up to you if you want to do this or not like I said before keep it simple uh, less is more sometimes but I want to show you that technique of cutting out stuff and adding stuff to the background. Alright, so once you are done with your complete scope design, what you want to do is to select all of your elements except for the clip and pre-compose all of those elements. And if you don't know how to pre-compose, you go to Layer, Pre-Compose, or the shortcut is Control shift c And I'm going to rename this to Scope Design, Comp, Move All Attributes, and uh, press OK. And you may notice that uh, it actually changes. And the reason it changes is because we don't have a background in here. So some of the blending modes don't work correctly. And it's pretty easy to fix. So let's see. I think the problem is that the, uh, the lens texture is showing up as black. Yeah, that's the problem. So 
that's pretty easy to fix. What you do is just select the lens texture and go to your ellipse tool and just drag out a mask, double click and maybe move it to a perfect spot and set it to intersect. That'll fix our problem. If we go back into the other comp, you can see that we've got our kill feed and stuff back. All right, so we are pretty much done with the design, but the only problem now is that it shows up all the time because it's just a still frame. Uh, but actually what we want to do is actually right click on the scope design comp and go to time freeze frame just to make sure. And uh, now what we want to do is animate the opacity every time that he zooms in. And this is kind of annoying, but you get pretty quick at it once you understand it and it's really not hard to do. So what you do is select the comp, press T for opacity, set a keyframe at 100%. You go to where he zooms out and you can use page up and page down to go frame by frame. Or you can use these buttons here to go frame by frame. So go frame by frame and find the frame that he's zooming out, which is this one, and set a keyframe at zero. So change the value to down to zero, it will create another keyframe. Then you select both keyframes, go to toggle hold keyframe if you if you uh, select both right click and go to toggle hold keyframe so what that'll do is instead of animating from 100 to 0 like it normally would it would hold at 100 till the next keyframe and then hold it at 0 until the next one all right so once he zooms back in if you scrub through go frame by frame zooms in change it to 100 and then move till where he zooms out down to zero, go to 100, you get the idea, he zooms back out, set it down to zero, and uh, I'm just going to stop it there because I think that's where the clip ends, or actually let's, let's do this one, do 100%, and then down to zero. So you can see it's not too bad. It's not too bad uh, of a workflow and the cool thing is, let me show you, if I make a main comp, let's say I had a main comp because this is just a pre-composition of, of one of the clips. If I have a main comp here and uh, let me make it uh, like a minute and if I drag out the comp uh, with the clip and the, the scope design, what's cool is if I sync this up or if I tie remap it, because it's pre-composed, no matter what I do to this, all of the scope frames will line up perfectly. If I want to sync this up in a certain way and then you know I decide to change that sync later, I won't have to re-keyframe all of these scope designs. So you want to make sure that you do it in a pre-composition here and in the main comp you can sync it up with time remapping or something and all of the scope frames will, will stay lined up. So that just about does it guys. You may want to add something like a color correction uh, if you if you have one. I just added a simple, simple color correction right here. You can see uh, it's pretty subtle. But uh, that just about does it guys. I encourage you to, to not exactly do what I did. Uh, and actually if I was going to use this in a project I would actually probably remove the, uh, the logos because I think they're distracting. Keep it like this. I like how this looks. It has like a grungy lens feel. And uh, that that just about does it, guys. So uh, get creative, do whatever design you want to, and yeah, you can even do animations and sort of and that sort of thing inside of this. The sky is the limit on this sort of thing. So if you guys enjoy this tutorial, please leave me a like. Uh, it always keeps me motivated. If you are new to After Effects and don't really know how to do some of these techniques, check out my basic training series, which is in the description and annotated on the screen. Otherwise, here are some tutorials you may have missed. And I'll catch you guys in the next video.